I notice up in the middle there's a picture of a woman, uh, probably the best known woman singer of that time, Kate Smith. She had a song, When the Moon Comes Over. I almost brought it with me, but I only had an hour. Um, she was my dad's favorite singer, and she he was a singer himself. She, he loved her. My dad sang for an all-girl band during the war, so he knew a lot of those old songs. And uh, of course, her big hit was God Bless America. It has a long preamble, when the war clouds gather, and then God bless. I uh, almost did that one too, but I only had an hour. And, and it, amazingly, people who were listening to the radio, that sound, that song was familiar to them, and they immediately just broke into song, that very song. The songs before that, of course, were all lighthearted depression songs, like, uh, well, every time it rains, it rains, pennies from heaven. Yeah, right. Not when I'm around, but that was what people were hoping for. And then, of course, as the war went on and all these boys went off to war, the songs again were lighthearted because everybody figured they'd be coming back, they'd be marching home. And so you had songs like, uh, don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. And then there's a boy's song, don't go out with anybody else but me. And of course, until I come marching home. Led to a lot of premature marriages uh, before the war and premature divorces after the war in some cases as well, but we won't go into that. Uh, here's, of course, the uh, declaration of war against the Japanese. Uh, a day or two later, Congress will declare war against the entire Axis powers. This uh, uh, is one from my collection. Steve has reproduced it far better than anything I could do, and it's down below if you want to look at it sometime. Uh, I think it's a little bigger copy. Here we have probably one of our most famous war uh, heroes. Uh, this is Homer Hopkins, who was at Pearl Harbor and whose ship was sunk. And uh, he suffered injuries and some months later died. He's the first Muskegon, uh, uh, Muskegonite to die during the war. But while I have him here, I should mention another area person, Stanley Hall. Now, I don't know if he's related to Mackenzie or not. He was from the White Lake area. He also was at Pearl Harbor, also on a battleship. The California was also sunk, but he survived. And what's unique about him is he left a diary of the whole thing. He was a radio man. He was not on duty. So he started hearing these sounds, ran up, thought it was a drill. He's in his underwear. And uh, he manned a gun as they were sinking into the, uh, into the bay. Uh, but he lived on. He went on to a cruiser and uh, fought on for another two years until he was wounded. I do have that diary if anybody's interested in making that a project. Uh, here again, we have the war against Germany. I can't read the date, but uh, no, that can't be right. I think that's the wrong year. Uh, this is from, I have to look closely. I, I think I've made a mistake. This is from uh, the First World War. But uh, anyway, you can't read the fine print, but uh, take my word for it. Uh, they did declare war against Germany and Italy shortly. Now, of course, that led to enlistments. I don't have all of the names of the enlisted people. Uh, we estimate about 10,000 men and women from Muskegon County are enlisted, and that's from a population of under 100,000. So roughly 10% of our fellow citizens were enlisted in the war. But because we have a junior college or community college group here, you all know that the community college was then called a junior college, and it was part of the Muskegon uh, uh, public school system. And uh, this is the high school uh, at that time, the uh, Muskegon High School. And of course, literally hundreds of young graduates from Muskegon High went into the war. And of course, some of them went on to college, but most of them went right into the war directly or into a war plant. Uh, here we have. Uh, Hackley Hospital, as it appeared then. And I have this up here because the uh, doctors and nurses and some of the other medical personnel from Hackley and Mercy a Hospital, I'll show you that in a minute, were part of uh, the 107th uh, Battalion. It's the, a medical battalion. Uh, it was part of the 32nd Division. 
Uh, that's the Red Arrow Division, for those who don't remember that. And it was uh, uh, actually activated as a federal unit back in 1940. So even before the war began, some of our Muskegon uh, guys and gals were actually in the, in the military. Uh, they went down to Fort Beauregard in Louisiana to train. They were going to go to the Pacific. So I guess that makes a little bit of sense for a change. The military doesn't always do the sensible thing. Uh, here's Hackley and of course here's Mercy Hospital. This is not where it currently is located. Do I? Oh, I'm sorry, I went back. Oh, I, oh, I got it mixed up. Sorry about that. I thought I had them in a different order. All right, there's Hack, there's a Mercy. It was, again, not where it is now. Here is the Hackley, and here is the high school. I beg your pardon. I long since gave away my storyboard. All right, so uh, again, so many of the graduates went into the war. This is uh, their annual literary magazine. It's more than just an annual. They, that came out every month, basically. And I mean, they hand set the type. They, I, I don't think people could do that today. It's just too time consuming. But here's their 44 uh, cover. Again, notice we've got the graduate. And they either graduate to go into the Army or they graduate to go into the Navy. There weren't any other options, really. And again, here's a cartoon from that same one. They go out of senior high school, the school marm says goodbye, they cross the street, and there they are at the draft board. And unless you enlisted, that was the way it went. Uh, here we have a couple of uh, views. These are the uh, famous uh, coaches from Muskegon. Uh, Ike Kepford and, and uh, Raymond, uh, Redmond. And here are two of their former uh, students who are now in the military, and they've come home on leave uh, to uh, talk about the old days. Here's yet another one from uh, Said and Done. It's a wonderful source for anybody who um, wants to look at local history. Uh, they're all at the Hackley Library, except I have a pretty good collection myself. These are a group of the men uh, who all served in the military, some in the Navy, some in the Army. You can read their names. My site is not good enough. Uh, here's yet a, these are some uh, couples. Uh, again, the girl stayed here, probably in the defense plant, maybe, or uh, maybe working in a, in a cafe or something like that. And her boyfriend or husband went off to war. You can read their names.